it's Ashley and I'm back with another video and we're gonna be finishing up talking about Hill House because inadvertently well I can't try to, I can't say that it well I it wasn't expected I watched all of it in two days after I wrote that video <laughs> So the last video I posted about it, I had said I was almost done with episode four or episode three. And before I know it, I was done watching all of it and I really enjoyed it. Like it was really engaging. It was addictive, which is why I watched all of it, even though I didn't intend to. So, my thoughts overall, like I said, I think it was amazing. I think everything was well written. The story kind of, it, it came pretty much full circle. Um, when they did the episode on Nell, I think which was like episode five, because episode four, was about the, um, was it Lucas, the twin that had the drug addiction, which growing up like that, I could see why he had one. Like those two, like they were all affected by the house, but those two were affected the most and I could see why they had the most issues besides the mother. Uh, And I, I felt really bad for them. Um, but when they showed the episode for Nell and how she thought she had found some kind of happiness in her life with her husband and he was helping her with her sleep paralysis, which kind of, it's kind of scary because what happened to her because she was haunted is what happens to regular people who I know I can't say they aren't being haunted have the same experiences obviously which is why there's like so much it's talked about so much now but they feel like there's somebody standing over them and it's scary to think like what if that really is what's happening like some spirit or something made it through some kind of astral realm and they came to visit you it's scary when you think about it like that anyway any anyway i'm like creeping myself out good thing it's the middle of the day well in the morning but when the way her husband died was so sad because it was it shocked me because i I was like, no, he's just unconscious. And that's like, no, she gave him a broke neck too. And when you find out the broke neck lady is actually Nell in the future, and she was making these predictions or the house was giving her these premonitions of what her life was gonna be or how her life was gonna end, it's so fucked up because you're like this little girl was being tortured by her future self and then when you think about it because Nell helped her siblings like she helped them get out of the dream that the house was trying to put them in when they went to the house like how it tricked her into thinking that all these people were there and her husband was alive and then she ended up dying or killing herself well no she didn't kill herself they killed her but it was sad like it was it was sad because um what did Theo say oh she said Nell didn't have to try this hard to get us all together when they were at the funeral home at her viewing and it was it's sad that it took her having to 
pass away for her to be there to actually save them because if, if that was the case they all would have been in that red room and passed away like they all would have died so one of them basically had to die and um it was sad how Oh, and then it's so strange. Well, I think I was, they kind of foreshadowed how the mom and Nell both died, except for the mom didn't hang, but she fell from the same place, the spiral staircase, when she, they were renovating the house and the mom was like, um, you might want to get rid of that rope. She's like, I can picture somebody hanging, like dead bodies hanging. And I'm like, and I'm like, broke neck woman. That's what I thought the first time. And I'm like, but who is the broke neck woman? And then you've come to find out that it was Nell. And then the fact the mom seen the same thing when she seen both of the twins in the uh, Cheryl's morgue. And she seen Nell after she had been embalmed. And then she seen Lucas after he had had a drug overdose. was so in denial and kept trying to tell his family they were crazy like he was gaslighting them so much and I wanted to punch him in the face because he was in denial I understand like he was in denial but when his dad told him I read your book and guess what you were seeing the same shit everybody else was you just didn't realize it <laughs> And he was like, when they were going back to the house to stop Lucas. And I'm like, bitch. And then he was seeing Nell at the funeral. And he was like, nope, mm -mm, nope. And he was trying to deny it then too. And she was trying to tell him something then. And I, it was creepy yet sweet how the father seeing the wife. Like, she was always with him, and, like, he was having conversations and stuff with her. Um, and it was really sweet, but it was kind of creepy and sad. Ian, I like that he sacrificed himself so, uh, his wife could have somebody. Because that flapper ghost, that bitch is manipulative. And way too persuasive because when she first showed what well the old lady said she's a liar and they really hadn't shown her except for that one time what was it when she grabbed Lucas when she grabbed him when he came to the house to burn it down and it didn't work she was like that's when you got more of a backstory on her she was so manipulative the way she kept whispering in the mom's ear and making her more and more paranoid because we come to find out that's what the house does to you when you stay after dark which is why the people that were watching over it they figured it out and they stopped and it was also, also, it was really sad and sad, but sweet how they, the whole reason that the dad didn't burn the house down was because uh, he wanted them, the, he was, he was willing to let the grounds people, is that what it would be called? I can't remember the family's name. See their daughter that his wife killed and for the longest I thought that little girl was a ghost because they kept saying they had a daughter but I thought that they were they never said if she was alive after the first one passed away and the way that she kept her hair she looked like an old-timey ghost so the whole time 
I thought they were seeing shit. Like Lucas, I thought his friend was like, I really thought she was a ghost too. And then when she drank the tea, when she was the first one to drink the tea out of all the kids and she got sick, I'm like, oh, oh, she was a person. Like she, like she was alive. And then when you see her with her, like that blue gown, that's when you realize that's when she's a ghost. And it was sad because they father had given that story about what happened the first time his wife was pregnant and she got overworked. And they kept, they, he didn't burn the house down so they could still see their daughter. And at the end, also when he brought his wife to the house, so she could be with their kids. Because obviously the dog, the baby that they, that was stillborn must have died while they were at the house as well. Because they kept saying they were hearing crying. But when their daughter was born, she was stillborn, so she didn't get to. So the house was like torturing them, but also letting them know your daughter is here. And, uh, is that everything that I wanted to talk about? Um, yeah, I think so. Theo, I'm really happy that she has decided to embrace her gifts. Which, as a kid, like, be just as a kid growing up, she seemed to handle it pretty well. And she was the same as she is now, like, where she was just, like, really blasé about everything. Um, and I'm happy she, I'm happy they finally told Cheryl... Yeah, we all took the money. Even though she was sitting there trying to talk shit about all of them. Her husband's like, babe, babe, we also took the money. And she's like, oh my God. I'm like, girl, egg, not even egg, a whole carton on your face. And I was just like, cringe. Your little speech don't got no kind of merit. Because you don't know. You didn't know the whole story. And I'm happy nothing happened between Theo and her uh, Cheryl's husband. But she was yelling at him, and it turns out she was the one that was cheating. I can't believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I said I was done, but I'm not. Steven getting a vasectomy because he thought mental illness was running rampant in his family and not telling his wife. Like, oh my God, that's like one of the most important things you just talk about. Decide on before you even think about getting married to somebody. And he made, he took that decision away from her. And it was so disgusting. And it was so disgusting. Like I was already mad at him for denying everybody's experiences at the house and gaslighting them and telling them that they're crazy. Um, and then come to find out the whole reason he was getting a divorce is that why? Well, they never said if he told her or not and that's the reason why they were getting a divorce, but because that was at the very beginning of the episode. They were talking about divorcing. But they never showed a scene where he told her. Other than like him. Sitting down in the house. But that's when he was in his dream. And she was actually pregnant. But... I'm excited for 
the next season. I hope they go more into detail with the other ghosts there, especially the uh, flapper ghost. I forget what they said her name was. Lily, something like that. And, um, the old timey, like the, the one, the scary, the fucking scary long ass ghost with the hat that Lucas had that was like the owner of the hat and he was using the cane to like move around, but he was just floating. He was scary as shit. So I would like to know more about those two in the uh, handlebar mustache ghost that Steven seen that he thought was just somebody working on the clock uh, at the when they were doing the renovations. But yes. So I finished the whole. I finished it all. Um. I don't know what the next show I'll be talking about is, but what did you think about this season? What's something you didn't like? Um, I didn't really have much that I didn't like, actually, other than character decisions, but that's part of character development. So, and that's meant to happen, or you're supposed to feel some kind of emotion from the decisions they make. So, I enjoyed the show. I heard they're supposed to be doing a second season, but I haven't seen anything. But I haven't really been looking for anything for the second season. But thank you for watching. And I will see ya. Bye. If you want me to get close to you, just tell me what to do, tell me what to do. If you want me to take over, just give me the green light, just give me the green light.